very good evening welcome to chinna logics this is narsimha reddy kasaram how are you all very good evening damu suresh welcome to the session so indian economy we are going to deal with the very very important questions that are going to give an insight into the concepts of the indian economy right so uh, i want everyone of you to answer the questions that uh, we are uh, giving on the slides and uh, go through the questions clearly understand the questions and try to answer each and every question right very good evening hi vijayalakshmi very good evening amma yes one second let me just one second give me a minute yeah <clears throat> Yeah, whoever has joined, just to say hi, Vijayalakshmi, hi ma. Yes, very good evening. Yeah, welcome Sandhya Rani, Pawan Gurjam fans, Karnataka. Very warm welcome. Okay, let's make a start. So there are very good questions uh, through different different topics of Indian economy. We have some diverse way topics. Okay, try to answer these questions. So try to learn a subject through MCQs. That's the best way of uh, uh, you know this called reverse engineering process. Okay, so when you go through a question, you understand that there is something to be understand understood in the question. So when you try to understand understand that concept, you get clarity on the concept. Okay, so very very important. Ravinder, Prince, Monica, very good evening, Emma. Yes. So the first question is before you. Okay, actually this is English channel, but still uh, we got some Telugu question also. Don't worry, uh, but just concentrate on the English questions. Okay. So which of the following is not method of national income estimation? Right. Very very nice question. Very important question. So you have got a value added method, income method, expenditure method, taxation method. So my question is that out of all these four methods, there is one method which is not a method of estimation of national income. now i want you i want you to give me answer for this question so which of the following is not a method of estimation of national income yes come on everyone of you all the 10 persons should actually type the answers in this okay chat window right you can see the question right yes okay i got the first answer from ravinder also from suresh what about others yes everyone of you should give answer for this question because the question seems very simple but the concept is very huge very huge concept behind this okay you will wonder is that such a big concept right yes i am getting answers as d b yeah okay so you say that taxation is not the method of estimation of national income that's it antena that's it okay fine you all are exactly right you all are exactly right the right answer is nothing but uh, taxation method okay so we have got value added method which is also called as a product method okay and we have got income method we also have got expenditure method but we don't have a method of estimation of national income by the name taxation method okay now i'll try to give certain overview on this very important concept this is so very clearly try to understand this uh, concept okay see basically what is the meaning of a product method so when i say product method when i say product method it is nothing but uh, the total value of the goods and services produced means what uh, number of goods produced number of final goods okay and into their prices into their prices that's called as a product method now when you come to the income method this is this is very very difficult income method this is something very very important now when you come to income method there are three types of income generated by different people in the society what are the different three types of incomes uh, for example there are like people like me okay like who are working for a firm okay now i am working for a firm called as chandan logics now when i am working for chandan logics i get paid for the services that i am rendering okay so whatever the money that i am earning by working for chandan logics okay that is my salary that is my salary right now when you come to this salary part it can be of different different types okay it can be a cash component it can be a cash component okay along with cash component i am also get certain social security benefits social security benefits okay in addition to the social security benefits i may also get certain other things such as i may be provided with food i may be provided with coffee i may be provided with some coupons okay so all these is also going to be 
Or you can say like, you know, some coupons, all those things, okay? All this part is going to be what, uh, it couldn't be the salary of a person, right? This is the one method. There are some people, there are some people who are not working for a firm, but they themselves are running a firm. For example, let's say Chandan sir is running his own firm, Chandan Logics. Now, whatever the money that is earning as a part of profit, okay, all that money can be a income for him, right? So, whatever I am getting is a salary, but whatever he is getting is nothing but the profits that he is earning. I need to add up this one also. So, to all this, I need to add up this part. The third one, the third one, that is called as what? Mixed income. What is it called as? Mixed income. What is the meaning of mixed income? You would have seen the movie called Balagam. Okay. In the movie called Balagam, there is a character called as Venu. What that Venu would be doing? He would be stitching clothes on a sewing machine. Where is the sewing machine? Does he own a shop? No. He is stitching at his own home. Means what? He is not paying any rent. He is not paying any rent. He is not employing any employees, okay. He himself is an employer, he is home himself is a shopper, okay, and he is getting profit also. So, his profit, his rent, everything is mixed. That's called as what? Mixed income. Now, when I add up all these things, what I am getting is nothing but it's called as an income method. What is it called as an income method? So, when I wanted to estimate the nation income, I can estimate using the product method. I can also estimate using what? Income method. In the society, you take anyone, there will be any one of these three categories. Okay. Either they may be the salary earned persons, either they may be a persons who are running a business okay, by getting profits, or they can be a person who are earning a mixed income. Right. Now, you sum up all these things, what you are going to get is nothing but nation income by income method. Okay. The third one, the third one is nothing but expenditure method. What is it called as? Expenditure method. Now, when you say expenditure method, what are the different types of expenditure that we make in the society, right? Now, what are the income I am getting? What do I do? I spend some part of my income. I spend some, of, some part of my income to live my, to live my life, means for my livelihood purpose, right? So, that is called as what? Uh, consumption expenditure. What is it called as? Uh, consumption expenditure. Now, some part of the money I am spending for groceries, some part I am spending for clothing, some money I am spending for rent, all those things, that is called as consumption expenditure. In addition to that, uh, I also put some money in the bank uh, in the form of uh, savings. What is it called as? Uh, savings. Now, whatever the money I am putting in the bank in the form of savings, uh, the bank will give that money to some industries uh, in the form of investment. So, the second part is nothing but investment. The third thing. So, first one is what? Consumption expenditure. Second one is what? Savings. Savings are getting converted to investment. Okay. The third one. What is the third type of expenditure I am doing? I am paying taxes to the government. I am paying taxes to the government. Now, when I am paying taxes to the government, the government is using that money and spending for the public expenditure. That is called as what? Government expenditure. What is that called as? Government expenditure. The fourth part, I wanted to buy a Harley Davidson, but Harley Davidson is not available here. What am I doing? I am importing from other countries. When I am importing from other countries, the money is from my pocket is not going into the country, it is going out of the country. Why? Because of imports. I am writing it as minus M imports. Now, there are some people who are exporting goods to other countries also. For example, I am creating something called Royal Enfield. What am I doing? I am exporting that Royal Enfield to other countries. That is called as what? Exports. What is that called as? Exports. So, whatever the money that I am spending, it can be in the form of consumption expenditure called as C. It can be the savings which are converted into investment. Okay. It can be the taxes which are converted into government expenditure. And it can be exports minus imports. Exports minus imports. And this is a formula for what? Expenditure method. What is it called as? Expenditure method. So, whenever you are estimating nation income, you can estimate nation income by product method. You can estimate nation income by income method. You can also estimate nation income by which method? Expenditure method. Okay. So, we have got only three methods. Value ma added method is called as a product method. One more is called as income method. The one is called as what? Third one is called as expenditure method. The three methods of estimation of nation income. We don't have a fourth method called as a taxation method. Is that clear enough of you? Yes. Did you all get the concept? Arthur the concept? Okay. So, what, what is the method of estimation of nation income by income method? It is nothing but salary earned by the people. 
The second one is nothing but the profits and the third one is called as a mixed income. What is it with respect to expenditure method? Consumption expenditure plus investment plus government expenditure plus exports minus imports. Okay. So, this is a formula for what? Expenditure method, income method and also product method. Right. So, in the examination on this formula you can expect a question. You can expect this kind of question from CGL. You can also expect this kind of question from group 2 also. Right. Okay. Yes. If you have understood, put a thumbs up. Okay. Put a thumbs up. Right. Cool. Next one. The standard of living in a country is represented by its poverty ratio, per capita income, national income, unemployment rate. Okay. The standard of living of a country is represented by what? Is it poverty ratio, per capita income, national income, unemployment rate? What is the right answer? So, which of the following shows the standard of living of a country? That is the question. Yes. Hemalata, group food. Thank you, thank you, Hemalata. Good, good to know that. Okay, thank you, thank you. I am more privileged. Okay, I am very happy that uh, the questions which we discussed came in the examination. That's very happy. At least you will have an edge over others. Okay, by attending the classes. Good, good, good. Okay, I am getting answers. Most of you are coming with the right answer. The right answer is nothing but per capita income. What is the right answer? Per capita income. What is the per capita income? Per capita income is nothing but national income by population. What is it called as? National income by population. Now, why per capita income represents the standard of living of a country? You all know that India is the fifth largest economy in the world, right? India is the fifth largest economy in the world, okay? And uh, if you see that there are countries like France, there are countries like, you know, uh, Italy, there are countries like, uh, you know, what is it called as uh, UK, Okay, whose GDP is less than that of India. But can you tell that we are more, we are having better standard of living than those countries? No. Though their per capita, though their GDP is very, very less, their per capita income is better than India's. So, per capita income is going to be the good indicator of standard of living of a country. India in terms of GDP is the fifth largest economy in the world. But when you come to per capita income, India will go somewhere around 120 to 140 rank. Okay, means what? Uh, whatever the GDP that India is earning, 3.01 trillion dollars. 3.01 trillion dollars. Okay, this value of the GDP is not sufficient for a big population like uh, India. We already saw it, right? What is that? Uh, the per capita income of India is 1.97 lakh. Okay, 1.73, if I'm not wrong. 1.73 lakh. 1.73 lakh. This is not sufficient for us. Okay. So, per capita income is going to represent the standard of living of a country, not the GDP, not the national income. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Himalata. Next one. In an economy, the sectors are classified into public and private on the basis of what? Okay. On what basis you say public sector and private sector? Employment conditions, nature of economic activities, ownership of enterprises, uses of raw materials. Okay. On what criteria you tell that this is a public enterprise, this is a private enterprise? Very simple question. Very simple question. Yes, 1.7 lakh. Suresh, you are right. Okay. Good. Come on, you answer for this question. On what basis you are going to classify the industries, public sector industries or private sector industries? Yes. Okay, I'm getting answers A, C. Okay, come on. I thought it's a very simple question, but I got multiple answers. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Come on. A or C, there is a tie. Two are saying A, two are saying C. What about remaining 15 people? Okay. Everyone should answer. C. See, when you take part, when you take part in the discussion, you will get benefited, others also will get benefited. Okay, Monica is coming with a different answer saying B. Okay. C. Okay, okay. See here. See, when you call, for example, if I, if I tell you Reliance Industries, Reliance Industries, private or public? Reliance Industries, private or public? Yes, come on. You answer question for this question. Reliance Industries, private or public? Yes? Obviously, it's a private. Why? Why are you telling it's a private? Because who is the owner of Reliance? The owner of Reliance is Mukesh Ambani. Okay. Now, Mukesh Ambani is a private person. 
If I ask you, is a BHEL public or private? Then you don't find one person, you find government of India. So the owner of the BHEL is what? Government of uh, India. Okay. Now, on what basis you are calling BHEL as government? Uh, because who is the owner of BHL? Government of India. Who is the owner of Reliance? Mukesh Ambani. Mukesh Ambani is a private person and government of India is a government. So, based on the who is the owner of the enterprise, based on the ownership of the enterprise, you say it's a private or public. So, the right answer is nothing but ownership of enterprise is the right answer. Clear? Very good. Next one. Who coined the term Hindu rate of growth for the Indian economy? Very simple question, but many times it has come in the examinations, okay? A.K. Sain, Kriti S. Parikh, Raj Krishna, Montek Singh, Halwalia. So, who among the following is the one who coined the term? Okay? The Hindu growth rate, the term Hindu growth rate was for the first time coined by whom? Who made the term called as Hindu growth rate? Who for the first time gave this word called as Hindu growth rate? Okay? So, that's the question here. A.K. Sain, Kriti S. Parikh, Raj Krishna, Montek Singh, Halwalia. Who is that? Come on guys, you start answering the question. Yes. Okay, I got the first answer from Suresh. He says Raj Krishna. What about others? Anyone of you differ with Suresh? A, B, C, D. That is what I am asking. A or B or C or D. Very simple alphabet Sunday. A, tell me A or B or C or D. Why are you worried? Okay. Okay, very good evening, YouTuber Nabi Nani. Okay, okay, Vijayakshmi says Raj Krishna. What about us? Yes, Navin, your answer is Kriyas Parik. Okay, okay, very good, very good, very good, very good. You are taking some time to answer. The right answer is nothing but Raj Krishna. Okay. Basically, let's try to understand what exactly is Hindu growth rate. Hindu growth rate is nothing but it is a term to tell slow growth rate. It is a term to show what growth rate? Slow growth rate. Okay. If you see from 1951 that we started the first five year plan till 1980, till 1980, when we completed the rowing plan after completion of the fifth five year plan. Okay. In this complete 30 years of period, in this complete 30 years of period, India never crossed 5% growth rate. India was always having a less than 5% growth rate. So, all over the world, when they wanted to show one country saying that you are having a less growth rate, they used to compare with India. See, your growth rate is like India. You are having a Hindu growth rate. Means what? You are having a very, very poor growth rate. So, here Hindu growth rate means very poor growth rate, very less growth rate. For the first time, India crossed the 5% growth rate in the 6th 5-year plan. Which 5-year plan? 6th 5-year plan, which was between 1982-1985. This is a period where India crossed the, for the first time, the 5% growth rate. In this 6th 5-year plan, India registered a growth rate of 5.2%. India is a growth rate of how much? 5.2%. So, this term called as a, this term called as Hindu growth rate is coined by an economist called as a Raj Krishna. Clear? Yes? Very good. Superb. Yes. Next one, the very, very important concept. Okay, let me see that. The prices at which government purchases food grains for maintaining the public distribution system, ration shops, and for building a buffer stock is known as, okay? So, the prices at which the government purchases food grains for maintaining the public distribution system and for building up buffer stock is known as minimum support price, procurement price, issue price, selling price. Yes. Come on. Yes, all of you should answer the question. Answer this question. Very important question. Kandukuri, Rajita, Vijay Lakshmi. Yes, Suresh, Mogli, Bharati. Thank you, Bharati. You are given big compliment, Amma. Very big. I'm not that great. Okay. <laughs> yes. Slow growth rate, 30 years. Yes, Suresh. Exactly. Come on. Yes, superb. I'm getting answer for many personalities. Yes. Actually, you people motivate us, actually. Okay. See, when we see more participation from you, then we get motivated to give more content. Right? And remember that uh, anyone will read before examinations. 
people who started their preparation well before the examinations are really the serious aspirants. Yes or no? So, if for example, let us consider if tomorrow or day after tomorrow would have been examination, how many people would have attended this session? Some thousands of people would have attended this session, right? Okay, see, the seriousness is like that. Anyone will get motivated in the last moment, but who gets motivated well before they are the ones who are going to achieve the success? Okay, very, very important. Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, Mogli, you can contact, I'll give some numbers, you can contact the numbers, they will tell you the details. Okay, anyway, I have slides on the, uh, for the pricing also, don't worry, I'll show you. Okay. Superb, I got answers, many of you. The answer is not minimum support price, the answer is procurement price. Okay, what is the answer? Procurement price. See, there is a small difference between the minimum support price and procurement prices. This is a very, very important concept. Try to listen to this concept. Remember that uh, minimum support price is generally announced uh, before the cropping. Before uh, cropping. Means, before you are sowing the seeds, uh, the minimum support price will be announced. For example, now people are going to sow the seeds. Already government has given MSP for each and every crop. Okay. Now, when you come to procurement price, uh, this is announced uh, after harvest. After harvest. After harvest means what? Uh, after the crop has come, you cut the crop. After cutting the crop, uh, okay, based on the requirement, government will announce uh, what is that called as uh, procurement uh, price. Very, very important. So, the purpose of minimum support price is not only to help the farmers. Uh, in addition to help the farmers, uh, they wanted to control the demand and supply. How do you control the demand uh, or how do you control the supply of the crop with the help of minimum support price. For example, let us say, government want people not to produce more paddy. Then what government will do? Government will announce less MSP. When government announces less MSP, the people who are cultivating paddy, they will get discouraged. What they will do? They will cultivate less paddy. If government want to cultivate more oil palm, what government will do? Government will announce more MSP. So government will encourage you to cultivate oil palm. That is the reason. Minimum support price is always announced before the cropping. Very, very important. This also can be a question. Okay. When you come to the procurement price, uh, after the crop is produced, uh, if government thinks that they need to maintain a buffer stock. Buffer stock means what? Extra stock to be maintained in the FCI go-downs. Okay. Now, what government will do? Government will come and will see how much produce available in the market and they will announce something called as a procurement price saying that uh, at this price, we are willing to procure your Food grains. Okay, very very important. Here, very very important concept is nothing but minimum support price. Okay. Now, if you ask me a question, uh, who is going to announce the minimum support price? My answer is uh, government of India is going to announce uh, minimum support price. Who is going to announce uh, government of India is going to announce uh, minimum support price? Okay. Who is going to recommend the minimum support price? Uh, the recommendation of minimum support price is done by CACP. Commission for Agriculture Cost and Prices. What is it called as a Commission for Agriculture Cost and Prices? Will recommend MSP to Government of India. Based on the recommendations of CACP, Government of India will announce uh, this minimum support price. Now, who is going to implement the MSP? The implementation of the MSP is with the state government. Who is going to implement MSP? State government is responsible to implement a minimum support price. The owner is Government of India, but the implementation is done by the state government. Now, who acts as a nodal agency? Means what? Uh, who will come, who will procure, who will transport, who will store? Means uh, Food Corporation of uh, India. Who is that? Uh, Food Corporation of India is the nodal agency for what? Uh, minimum support price. And finally, where is the minimum support price implemented? Uh, the physical location where the minimum support price is implemented is called as uh, APMC, Agriculture Producing Market Committees. It is nothing but market yards. Okay. Now, who are the stakeholders of minimum support price? All these five are the stakeholders of minimum support uh, price. Who is the first one? Government of India. Who is the second one? Commission for Agriculture Cost and prices recommends msp who is the third one uh, state government 
in charge of MSP, implements MSP. Who is the fourth one? Food Corporation of India. Food Corporation of India is a nodal agency. Who is the fifth one? APMC, Agriculture Producing Market Committee. So all these five together will be implementing MSP. These five kalustani emaitadi, pidikil avutadi, MSP implement. MSP will be implemented. Is that clear? Yes. My heroes, is this clear? Okay. When I am seeing my parents, I will be motivated. Nice. Okay. Yes, they announce MSP every year. And MSP is generally targeted to be 1.5 times the production cost. 1.5 times. 1.5 times the production cost is going to be generally MSP. Right? Okay. Do you all get this point? Is that clear? Yes. If it's clear, put a thumbs up. If you have learned something new, put a thumbs up. Okay, if you have learned something new, put a thumbs up. Is that clear? Yes, superb. Yes. So, some of you are asking some details. See here, we have got for CGL, CHSL courses. Okay, CHSL is for 2250, CGL is for 3600. We are going to give you around 650 plus hours of more than 650 hours of uh, video lectures. You are going to have bilingual mode, you are also going to have an English medium mode. Similarly, we have got RRB course, we have got, we have, for banking, we have got a courses, okay. And Maha Bank Pack, and when you come to this, we have got 500 plus hours of coaching with both bilingual and English medium. Similarly, we have got a course for uh, railway, budget, railway badges that are going to come in future. This is also going to be in both modes, bilingual and also English mode. And we are going to, uh, you are going to have for 450 plus hours of uh, video lectures. And if you are preparing for all the examination together, you are going to have 850 plus hours of video lectures. Uh, it's going to cover each and everything. Uh, you are going to have all types of tests, uh, including bilingual mode and English mode. And uh, Zero to Hero is a course launched by Chandan sir. You can go for this to improve your arithmetic and reasoning skills. And when you come to this, uh, this with respect to ba CGL banking, and you also have got RRB, you also have got combo courses along with ICET, CSAT, uh, RPF, and Defense. Uh, these are the prizes for each and every one, every course for different, different type. Uh, months okay and people are preparing for group two you're asking i think moli was asking see clearly like uh, we are offering a combo batch for appsc tspsc 1530 rupees and for group four we already did this and such volume we have got 2000 rupees for group two we have got 1440 okay so like that uh, we have got for different different things you can opt based on your choice if you are looking for a specific course also you can contact the numbers which are displayed here these people will give answer your questions queries okay no? yes is that clear next one Super, super. In India, planned economy is based on mixed economy system, capitalist system, Gandhian system, socialist system. Okay. Planned economy in India is based on what? Okay. We are having five-year plans based on which system? Is it a mixed economy system, capitalist system, Gandhian system, socialist system? Yes. Try to answer this question. See, we are soon expecting the group notification from Andhra Pradesh also. Okay, but see here, once the notification is out, okay, especially with respect to Andhra Pradesh, the exams will be scheduled in plan. You will not get any buffer time. In Telangana, sometimes you get extension, but not in AP. So, for AP, if you are preparing, be prepared very well in advance. Very well in advance. Okay, come on. Okay, I know that you are going to get confused. The right answer is nothing but socialist system. Remember that the concept of planning India has adopted from Russia. Russia has got socialist system. So we adopted this concept of planning from Russia. Okay, and what kind of system does Russia has a socialist system? So answer is what? Socialist planning. Okay, superb. Next one. Mahalonobis model has been associated with which uh, five-year plan? Okay, Mahalonobis plan. Okay, this is called as Mahalonobis plan. On June 29th, we had a birthday of PC Mahalonobis. You remember that? Okay, so it celebrates National Statistics Day. National Statistics Day is nothing but the birthday of PC Mahalonobis. Now, he has given a plan for one five-year plan. Which five-year plan is that? Is it the first five-year plan, second five-year plan, third five-year plan, fourth five-year plan? What is the answer? Yes, guys. Okay, you want zero to hero from me also. Huh? Okay, foundation class you mean to say, right? Bharati, foundation classes, right? Okay, we'll plan. Good idea. Anyways. Yes, what's the answer? Superb. Sanjay Rani has given the right answer and Nani also has given the right answer. 
సూపర్ అండి వెరీ గుడ్ ద రైట్ ఆన్సర్ ఇస్ నథింగ్ బట్ సెకండ్ ఫైవ్ ఇయర్ ప్లాన్ వెరీ 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 ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఓకే సో ప్రసన్న చంద్ర మహలోనా బీస్ దిస్ పర్సన్ ఈస్ కాల్ ఎస్ ద ప్రసన్న చంద్ర మహలోనా బీస్ ఓకే ఈస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద గ్రేటెస్ట్ స్టాటిస్టిషన్ దట్ ఇండియా ఇస్ ఎవర్ ప్రొడ్యూస్డ్ ఓకే ఈజ్ అ పర్సన్ హూ ఈస్ రెస్పాన్సిబుల్ ఫర్ ద ఎస్టాబ్లిష్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియన్ స్టాటిస్టికల్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ విచ్ ఇస్ ప్రజెంట్ ఇన్ కోల్కత్తా ఓకే and his birthday is celebrated as what national statistics day now he is the one who has introduced the russian model of planning into india and that is the reason from second five year plan we are give more importance to industries okay he is the one who proposed something called as the trickle down theory trickle down effect so in the second five year plan what do you find is nothing but trickle down effect okay now if you see this second five year plan what is the importance of second five year plan so first of all you should know the period the second five year plan starts in 1956 it goes till 1961 first important thing the second important thing is that it's based on which plan a malolam based model and it has given importance to secondary sector secondary sector means what uh, industries okay so what is the importance of second five year plan the importance of second five year plan is that but they give more emphasis for what industries and very very important during the second five year plan only bilai steel plant durgapur rorkela steel plant all these three also came into existence uh, during second five year plans many times this question has come in the examination bilai durgapur and rorkela came into establishment during which five year plan the answer is uh, second five year plan and one more important tifr tata institute for fundamental research also was established during the same period atomic energy commission came into existence uh, and we have achieved a growth rate of 4.2 percent okay i said it's 4.1 percent okay we kept a target of 4.4 percent but we achieved 4.1 percent uh, very 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 important okay yeah growth rate target was 4.2 right 3.6 4.2 yeah clear 4.5 we kept a target we achieved 4.1 percent okay yes i am good sri pamidi how are you yeah for long time seeing you here nice 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 i am doing good okay okay uh yeah you can just check it out with the uh, numbers moli okay yes clear clear next one the concept of economic planning in india is derived from russia australia usa uk already i give answer for this question what's the answer for this question come on guys what's the answer for this question you should make sound in the chat box don't keep idle okay rocket super 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 what's the answer for this question very simple super the right answer is russia just now i told you there's nothing big in that right now this is important this is important the nature of unemployment in agriculture in india is seasonal unemployment disguised unemployment both a and b none of this okay what kind of unemployment that you see in agriculture is it seasonal employment is it disguised employment it's both a and b none of this so what exactly is the right answer come on guys yes okay bharat is saying b disguised suresh is saying a what about us c okay okay come on guys okay very good very good mr sai krishna saman palli you are the first one to give the right answer the right answer is both a and b see here now when you come to which is the most prominent if you ask me the answer is b i did not ask you which is the most prominent as what kind of unemployment that you see in agriculture okay in agriculture you can see seasonal unemployment you can also see disguised unemployment why seasonal unemployment uh, for example let us say you go to a village area okay when you go to village area during this time in the month of july august okay you don't see anyone coming running to you and to pick your luggage why entire people in the village are busy doing their agriculture work yes or no the entire village will be deserted there will not be anyone to palakarin to you to talk to you yes or no so entire village will be like uh, deserted right but uh, same village what do you do you go in the month of summer in the month of march april may 
Okay. The moment you enter into the village, uh, one fellow will come and pick your luggage, one fellow will put hand on your shoulder, one fellow will say hi, one fellow will say bye. Okay. Every step you take, uh, every step you, uh, you take, some or other person will come and uh, talk to you. The only question they ask you, what are you doing? The worst question that you don't want anyone to ask you, but they will ask you, what are you doing? Anagada? Yes or no? So, it looks like, you know, the movie like Shatamanam Bhavati. In Shadavanam Bhavati's movie, whenever, you know, Prakash Raj is walking like this, each and everyone will be wishing him like that. So, why is that situation same village, different scenarios? Because in the month of July, August, okay, people are very busy with their agriculture work. In the month of April, May, people are not having any work. They are very silent. They are not having any work. They are very, they are very free. So, this kind of unemployment is called as what? Seasonal unemployment. Then what is the meaning of disguised employment? Uh, now you go to a village and uh, you see, let's say there is a 10 acres of land. Okay. When there is 10 acres of land, go to the landowner, one tata, one old person. Okay. Ask the old person, Mr. Old man, how much land are you owning? You tell that I am owning 10 acres of land. Okay. Very good. Okay. You ask, how many sons do you have? This fellow sell. You will tell that I have got three sons. Number one, number two, number three. Okay, three people. Now you go to the first person. You go to the first person, ask him, what are you doing? You will tell, I am doing farming. Ask him, how many acres of land do you have? You will tell, I have got 10 acres of land. Go to the second person, ask him, what are you doing? You will also say farming. Ask him, how many acres of land do you have? You will also say 10 acres of land. Go to the third person, ask him, what are you doing? He is also saying farming. How many acres of land do you have? 10 acres of land. Then you get a doubt. This fellow is staying 10 acres. This fellow is staying 10 acres. This fellow is staying 10 acres. Does this old man own 30 acres? You go again ask him. You tell, no, no, no. I got only 10 acres of land. Then why are your sons staying there 10, 10 acres each? No, no, no. They are telling about the same land, 10 acres of land. Means what? Uh, apart from this old man, these three fellows are also working in the same 10 acres of land. Yes or no? Now, what do you do? From this, what do you do? You take these two small fellows and send them to a city and ask them to work in the city. Don't come back to home. Okay. Now, only one fellow will be managing this 10 acres of land. There will not be any decrease in the productivity. There will not be any increase in the productivity. There is no change in the productivity of that farmland. Means what? The presence, the presence or absence of these two people is not making any difference. Uh, means uh, even if these people are working, the productivity is not increasing. Even if these people are not working, the productivity is not decreasing. Means these two people are said to be having what? Disguised unemployment. What is it called as? Disguised unemployment. Is that clear, heroes? Yes? Okay. So, disguised unemployment and prachanna nirudhyogita in Japan center. And the other one is unna lekunna, it won't be, it won't be theda leka pote, at one day nirudhyogan man mementum, disguised unemployment and Japan center. So, this is what I have said in English, the same thing I have repeated in Telugu. Okay. So, in the presence or after absence of any person, there is no change in the productivity. That kind of unemployment is called as what? Disguised unemployment. Did you all understand? Yes? Heroes, did you all understand? I am in live man, Mr. GS. I am in live. Okay. You can talk to me here. No issues. Okay. Yes, zero. Clear, everyone of you? Clear. One work more employees. Exactly, Sanjay, and you are right. See, this is economics class only. Sanjeev loan. Sanjeev, it is economic class only. Don't worry. Yes? Come on. You have got anything to share with me? You can say, share in the chat. Okay, I'll answer your queries. Okay, clear? Come on, next very, very important question is this. In the index of eight core industries, which one of the following is given the highest weightage? Okay, so among the following mentioned core industries, there are eight core industries. I mentioned four core industries. I am asking which one of them has got the highest weightage? Okay, coal production, electricity generation, fertilizer production, steel production. Okay, which one of the following has got the highest weightage among the core industries, mentioned core industries? Yes. GS, what do you wanted to tell? Tell me, man. Yes, group 4 completed. So what? Completed is completed. What is upcoming is group 2. That's important. Yes. Naveen, no two answers, only one answer. You cannot bubble two things in examination, right? You lose the mark. Okay, Naveen. Come on. 
Okay, I'm getting multiple answers means people are actually confused here. Very nice. When I see you confused, I'll be happy so that I get a chance to remove your confusion. Okay. So coming, the right answer is nothing but option B. Electricity generation has got the highest weightage of 19%. Okay, so if you ask me which one of the has got the more weightage among all eight core industries, uh, then it is nothing but uh, it is nothing but uh, very very important refinery products. Refinery products has got the highest uh, weightage. So whatever you see here is nothing but these are the core industries. Uh, what are the core industries? The coal is a core industry. Crude oil is a core industry. Natural gas is a core industry. Refined products is a core industry. Steel is a core industry. Cement is a core industry. Fertilizer is a core industry. And electricity is also a core industry. Now you should ask me a question. Why are these called as a core industries? What is the logic behind calling them as a core industries? Remember that these are called as a core industries because every other industry in the economy is dependent on these industries. Remember that without coal, without coal, there is no power industry. Without crude oil, there is no transportation industry. Without natural gas also, there is no power industry. Without refinery products or refined products, you cannot run any machinery in the country. Any no automobile industry exists. Without steel also, automobile industry is zero. Without cement, the real estate industry is zero. Construction industry is zero. Without fertilizer, agriculture becomes a big zero. And without electricity, nothing exists. You don't exist, I also don't exist. Means what? Every industry in this economy is dependent on these industries. So these are called as what? Core industries. What are they called as? Core industries. Remember that out of the total production that happens in this country, complete production, complete production. The weightage of the core industry is nothing but 40%. Okay. Means the 40% of the output to the industrial sector of the country is going to come from these eight core industries. Very, very important. A question will come in the examination. Which of the following is not a core industry? So you should know what are the core industries. And the highest weightage is for refining products. But in given the question, there is no refining products. Out of all the available, the answer is what? Electricity. Is that clear? My dear boys and girls, yes, yes, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll answer your question, yes, don't worry, I'll answer your question, don't worry, yes, okay, I'll tell you how to approach economics, okay, don't worry. Next, mixed economy means an economy where, what is the meaning of a mixed economy? Both agriculture and industry are equally promoted by the state. There is a coexistence of public sector along with private sector. There is an impo importance of small scale industries along with heavy industries. Economy is controlled by military as well as civilian rulers. So what is the meaning of mixed economy is my question. Okay. Option A, option B, option C, option D. Yes. Try to answer this question. Chumps. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. You can easily reach GS. See, we are not preparing for UPSC to tell that I need one year time. Okay. We are preparing for group two. Okay. Already we have got some knowledge. Okay. What we need to is that uh, we need to utilize these two months of time in a very, very systematic way. Okay. When you utilize this in a systematic way, there are many people who are going to stop their preparation in between. Okay. Those people are not competition. There are some people who wanted to prepare, they don't have time to prepare because they are working for their family reasons, for economic reasons. So they, those people also may be out of the competition. When you have time to prepare, when you have got plenty of resources uh, available, okay, you can easily prepare for this examination. Okay, very, very important. Yes, come on. Okay, the right answer is option B is the right answer. Whenever we see there is a coexistence of both uh, public uh, along with uh, private. So that is called as mixed economy. I am asking a question for everyone of you. Okay. Which industrial policy resolution in India is responsible for evolution of India as a mixed economy? India is a mixed economy because of which industrial policy? That is my question. So if anyone has got answer for this question, please try to ping in the chat box. So my question says that India has become a mixed economy because of which industrial policy? Okay, we have got different different industrial policies. Industrial policy 1948, industrial policy 1956, industrial policy 1991. Now, which industrial policy is responsible for India becoming a mixed economy is the question that I'm asking. Yes? 
come on super shivakumar excellent the right answer is nothing but 1948 industrial policy resolution ipr is responsible of india becoming a mixed economy this is a very very important question which has come in the examination many times just look into this in 1948 india has laid down for the mixed economy foundation because what india did is that india divided the industries into different different types there are certain industries which are having completely government monopoly means only government will run those industries private people are don't have any stake in the industries okay the second one is nothing but uh, there are some industries which can be run by the private people but government will have control government will have a control there are some industries which are run both by government and uh, private means government people will be there private people will be there. there be steel industries by government steel industries by the private and there are some industries which are completely under the private sector like this say uh, in the industrial policy 1948 government has classified industries in omni types uh, four types in this four types there is a participation of government and also private that is the reason industrial policy resolution 1948 is responsible for india becoming what kind of economy mixed economy very important question that has been asked many times in the examinations okay na yes superb heroes superb to control the inflation indirect taxes have to be increased decreased exponential increase no change yes try to give to try to give answer for this question to control the inflation indirect taxes have to be increased decreased exponential increase no change what is the right answer how do you control the inflation that's the question okay if you also can answer what about direct taxes so what has to be done with the direct taxes what has to be done with the indirect taxes to control the inflation which one has to be increased which one has to be decreased that's my question yes okay many people are asking a monica is saying b and uh, navya is saying uh, c exponential increase okay ah uh, sai krishna is saying a suri is saying d no change come on guys very simple logic very simple logic the answer is that uh, the indirect taxes has to be decreased uh, monica is right The option B is the right answer. Indirect taxes has to be decreased and direct taxes have to be increased. Okay, why will this happen or why will this going to control inflation in the economy? Very simple logic. For example, let us say that uh, I wanted to purchase a product. Let's say the cost of the product is hundred rupees. Okay, the tax on the product is let's say twenty eight percent. Then what will happen? Uh, tax will be twenty eight percent. So what is the total cost of the product? One twenty eight. now if i decrease the indirect tax if i make it as 14% then what will be the cost of the product 114 the price has decreased means what inflation is controlled inflation is controlled so that is how by reducing the indirect taxes you can control the inflation in the economy then how can you control the inflation by increasing the direct taxes who gave the right answer here monica gave the right answer let us take monica as example let us say that monica is very passionate about eating ice creams okay so what monica is doing uh, all this summer uh, every day after having lunch uh, she has got some pocket money with her uh, so she is going and eating uh, ice cream cream stone ice cream yes or no now every day monica is in the afternoon she is going eating ice cream and coming home eating ice cream and coming home now the ice cream guy was very familiar with monica and ice cream guy was thinking that uh, my ice creams are very great very good very tasty very delicious that is the reason monica is coming and eating the ice cream every day Okay, now he saw very huge demand for the ice creams in the summer because of these people going eating ice creams. Now what that cream stone guy did uh, increase the price of the ice creams. Yes or no? Now when the price of the ice cream increases, uh, people like you and me cannot eat ice creams. Only rich people like Monica can eat ice creams. Yes or no? Then what should government do? Government should reduce the prices. How will government reduce the prices? First of all, government will think why are the prices increasing for ice creams? then governments will see that you know monica is eating ice cream bharati is eating ice creams shravani is eating ice creams vijayalakshmi is eating ice creams all these ladies batch is eating ice creams yes sir no now why are they eating ice creams sir it is because ice creams are very good no because these people have got huge pocket money with them their pocket is full with pocket pocket money because the money available with them what they are doing simply they are eating ice creams every day now we have to reduce the pocket money how will we reduce the pocket money you have to think why they are having more pocket money now you check all their parents are government employees or private employees 
they are getting good salary. Now they are getting good salary means what? More money, more money means more pocket money. Now we have to reduce the take home salary of their parents. How you will reduce the take home salary of the parents? You cannot ask the employer to reduce the salary. What you will do? You increase the direct tax. You increase the direct tax. When the direct tax increases, whatever the salary that they are getting, they will pay more amount of money to the government. Their take home money, their disposable income will reduce. When their disposable income reduces, now they have to cut down the expenditure. What expenditure? Waste expenditure. If waste expenditure, whatever waste expenditure is there, that has to be reduced. Now when they are looking, what are the different types of waste expenditure? One of the biggest, biggest waste expenditure will be the pocket money given to their daughters. Yes or no? Now what they will do? They will cut the pocket money. When they cut the pocket money, now there is no money to eat ice creams. Yes or no? Now all this Monica, Bharati, Vijay, Lakshmi, Shravani, okay, everyone will go in front of the ice cream shop, but they will not go to the ice cream shop. Why? No pocket money. They are going, not going inside the shop. That guy, the fellow is looking like this, they will come, they will come, they will come, they will not come. Again they are going, they will come, they will come, they will come, they will not come. So they are going, but they are not going into the shop. No ice cream guy understood, okay, these people are running short of money, they are not coming to my shop. What you will do? You will make a board. What is that board? Uh, buy two ice creams, one ice cream free. Means what? Uh, two plus one bonanza. Okay. Buy two ice creams, you get one ice cream free. Now what they will do? Three of them will sit together and three of them will tell that we will give some some money each. And now what we will do? We will give two ice cream money, we will get the third ice cream free and again they will go and eat ice creams. Now what happened? For prices of the two ice creams, you are getting how many ice creams? Three ice cream means the ice cream price has reduced. Inflation is controlled. So like that, by increasing the direct tax, you can control the inflation. By decreasing the indirect tax, you can also control the inflation. Did you all understand? Yes? Did you all understand, my dear folks? Yes or no? Yes? Yes? Arthamainda, yes. Thank you, Suresh. Now only window shop, Rani. Yes, Sandhirani, yes. I missed you in the example. Okay, yes. Clear? No doubts, right? Super, super, excellent. Next one. Special drawing rights is the currency of IMF. This is in the form of, okay? Paper currency, gold, both silver and gold, accounting entry only. What is the form of SDR? SDR will be in the form of what? SDR will be in the form of what? Paper currency, gold, both silver and gold, accounting entry only. What is the right answer? Come on, guys. What is the answer for this question? Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, 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 no. The right answer is accounting entry. Okay. See, SDRs are something related to International Monetary Fund. Okay. Now, whenever a country is running short of foreign currency, when they are not able to make the payments for the imports that they got, they will go and request IMF. What IMF will do? From the IMF account, they will transfer some SDRs to their respective country's account. What the country can do? That country can convert that SDRs into dollars. The country can convert that SDRs into euros. The country can convert that SDRs into yen. The countries can convert into yuan. The country can convert into Great Britain pound. Like this, sir, the SDRs can be converted into five inter international currencies. Sir. They are the five international currencies. Is that clear? So like that, uh, you can convert the SDRs into these five international currencies. Very, 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 very important. Very, very important. Is that clear? Yes. So it is in the form of what? Accounting entry, not paper, not gold, not silver or something. Okay. Super. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. The five-year plans in India were finally approved by. Who is going to approve the five-year plans? That's my question. Who is going to approve the five-year plans? Yes.
is union cabinet is is the president is is the planning commission is the national development council who is responsible for approving the five year plans that's a question come on guys so simple question simple question simple question see my question is not who is going to prepare the five year plans my question is who is going to approve the five year plans so the question should be read very clearly don't get confused don't get confused yes guys yeah superb superb super 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 ramesh what is super ramesh okay yeah national development council remember that uh, the plans are prepared by the planning commission the planning commission prepares the plans but the plans are approved by national development uh, council okay the planning commission came into existence in the year 1950 the national development council came into existence in the year 1952 very very important this planning commission plays a advisory role it is not got the power to approve the plans but the national development council will be approving the plans the planning commission is headed by the prime minister the national development council is also headed by the prime minister okay the planning commission is a non statutory body non constitutional body even ndc is also non constitutional non statutory body and the members of the national development council are prime minister planning commission members and very very important uh, the chief ministers of the states along with the lieutenant governors okay they are also going to be the members of the national development uh, council very very important points okay so these are with respect to what the five year plans uh, concept clear yes guys super so we have got cgl chsl batches available you can go and opt for this and you have got 650 plus hours of coaching you are going to have a, a very very experienced faculties giving the subjects sir and you are going to have topic wise pdf material you are going to have topic wise test full length mock test both bilingual and english medium also and similar things are also applicable for uh, ipps rrb for bank examination preparation we got a uh, bank maha pack uh, and same thing is also applicable for railways because we are soon expecting the railway notification it's going to be a bumper notification so we have got 450 plus hours of training along with bilingual and english mode with all these things are also available all types of mock test and pdf content will be given and if you are preparing for all the examination put together you can opt for this uh, which is going to give you 850 plus hours of coaching right and uh, here if you see that the zero to hero batch is there from chandan sir okay bharati i'll take your session also we'll discuss on that and you also got uh, cgl preparation separately you can go for this bank separately for this you go brave for uh, railways you can go for this combo batches are available here csat uh, iset uh, rpf defense batch also available and you can call those numbers for any doubts that you have here right and uh, people of room for group 2 you can go for these things sir. these are the batches available it is available explicitly in english medium and so completely in telugu medium also these are available okay you can go for this and uh, any doubts you have got uh, mogli you can contact these numbers they will clarify all your doubts okay any doubt you have got they are going to clarify all your doubts okay get it clarified okay yes no no last question of the day question of the day yes sir can we have a special class of yours for tspsc group 2 which subject sai krishna yes question of the day this is a stress question okay i think in telugu medium class consider the following statements the theme of the national doctors day is family doctors on the front line i think this will take in the next class because it is a telugu medium question okay i'll give for your question of the day okay yeah when was the first national forest policy issued by the government of india that's the question of the day when was the first national forest policy issued by government of india that's the question yes yes question of the day suresh you can go for this question let's me see what the answer what question you are asking yes venu gopal gurukul i'll have to cross check the gurukul syllabus sama nalini i'll check the gurukul syllabus because one more person also asked for this i think monica or someone asked for this i'll check the gurukul syllabus i'll say whether it's going to helpful or not for you okay next class i'll give update okay yeah we'll do that if possible in the comment section you can put a link of the syllabus okay that will be make my work easy okay clear superb superb bina fig your right answer that's nice okay okay for this question i'll give answer in the next class okay see uh, we we'll have tomorrow class in uh, telugu medium channel only and uh, one more day we'll have again current affairs in uh, english medium also again okay so there's a nice session with you all 
and uh, keep preparing, keep that tempo, keep that motivation. Okay, can you this motivation for next two months? Uh, definitely, uh, group four is eye opener. So group four gave you the orientation for preparation of group two. So take it seriously, prepare the economic survey, prepare the budget. Uh, okay. Prepare each and every concept, write many examinations. The more number of examinations that you write, the your preparation is going to be the better. Okay, very, very important, very important. Okay, and we'll be there to help you in all the journey. Okay, can you tell about, uh, yeah, someone asking about, uh, about five year plans. Yeah, Sai Krishna will have a session on five year plans. Okay, and uh, see, uh, someone asking about how to prepare for economics, right? See, uh, economy is a very dynamic subject. Dynamic subject means it keeps on changing. Okay, on a day-to-day -day 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 basis, it will keep on changing. So, first, what you, need to do, what you need to do is that you should know the fundamentals. Okay. So, when you come to the fundamental part, it will be nothing but the concept of national income. Okay. So, when you are understanding the national income also, don't understand theoretically. Understand it in a practical way. You should understand things in a very, very practical way. Because uh, economic, economics is completely practical. Whoever teaches you economics in a practical way, they are the right person who are teaching the economics. Okay. If someone is just saying the formulas and all those things, okay, that is not the right approach. For example, I was telling you about the expenditure method formula. C plus I plus G plus X minus M. C, C, very simple. Okay. Now, I am as a person, I have got some money with me. How do I spend that money? I will spend that money for my consumption. Means what? The food that I eat, the clothes that I wear, the shoe that I wear. Okay. For all this, I spend some money. That's called consumption expenditure. Now, some more money, what I will do? Some money is left over. I will I'll put in the bank. Now, whatever the money I am putting in the bank, that is going in the form of investment to some industries. So, C plus I. I is investment. Some more money I am paying to the government in the form of taxes. Whatever the taxes will be taken by the government, they will spend that money. Government will make some expenditure. That's called government expenditure. G. Now, some more expenditure is there, I am making, but they are not getting those products in India. What I am doing, I am importing from abroad. Now, when I am importing from abroad, that money is going to other country, not to my country. So, minus M. Now, when exporting something to abroad, for example, I am preparing some chocolates in my home. I am ex The people are liking the chocolate, I am exporting to other countries. I am getting some money, that is X. That is a X. X minus M. Now, all this put together is the total expenditure that I am making. So, everything you should understand in the practical way. When you understand the things in a practical way, your understanding will be very clear and your learning of economy also will be very, very simple. Okay? So, like that, you should always go through practical oriented approach. Whenever you are learning a subject in the book also, you think, how is it practically applicable? If you are getting that, means you are understanding. If you are not getting anything of that sort, means you are not understanding it properly. Okay, so practical approach is important, fundamentals learning is important. Once you learn the fundamentals, rest of the things will be like a cakewalk. Okay, okay, dear, clear? Yes, tomorrow I'll do live Monica in uh, uh, Telugu channel. Okay, yes, Suresh, sure, Suresh, thank you, Nalini. Yes, hi, Krishna, I answered your question. Okay. Okay, who is the Chirala social teacher? Okay, Sanjay Rani. Okay, you are sir. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Telangana movement. Huh? Okay, it will take some time, Madhavi. Some time. Give me some time. Okay. Yes, thank you, everyone. It was a great session with you all. Catch you up again tomorrow again. Signing off, yours, Nara sir. Bye bye. Take care.